Hi everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm David Jansen. What I want to do is show you a, a kind of a, a fun way to do a little bit of gr uh, glazing and uh, some layering stuff to uh, paint this little peony and stuff. Now I have all different kinds of techniques. Over on to our, uh, our online store, so if we put a whole bunch of real quick download lessons if you want to see some glazing and some painting of roses and how some of this stuff works. But what I have here is just a small board. This is just a, uh, uh, what we call an F4 size. I, it is um, a little bit smaller than 11 by 14. And uh, I'm just going to put a couple of, uh, just a couple of peonies right here and uh, practice some glazing with you. Now I base coated it a kind of a, a greenish gray. It is a little bit of uh, Hansa yellow and a little black and and some white and uh, to make a real light uh, greenish gray color. I'm going to be using my uh, Heritage Multimedia acrylics. These are the colors that I use and and it's the basic uh, set here. I have added also a pine green and a yellow oxide and some burnt sienna to it. I really like those colors. Um, I use all different kinds of techniques, but uh, today I want to show you a simple glazing uh, type technique. And so what I'm going to do is uh, take uh, my three quarter inch fusion brushes. Now all of these products that I use, I only use these heritage and I only use the fusion, fusion brushes of what I paint with. All of them, the links are right down below uh, there and you can get them over on Amazon or you can get them from our studio, either one. So I'm going to take a little bit of extender. Uh, which is nice and dirty from the last painting I just finished. Um, and then I'm going to uh, grab some of my uh, burnt sienna. But instead of using the burnt sienna with uh, extender uh, mixed in, like these all have extender to their what we call globalized, so they have a very slow drying time. I want this to dry a little quicker right here. So I'm going to put some burnt sienna out here just into its uh, pure acrylic form here. And I'll just brush mix in a little bit of the extender into this. And I'm going to push these, this color in through like this. I'm going to um, do a technique here where I want this to, I want this burnt sienna background here. And sometimes into the, uh, the burnt sienna, I really like a little bit of raw umber. So this is raw umber, uh, earth tone color. And I'll squirt some of that out. And here and uh, I like that because it's a it's a it's an earth tone color that's slightly to the green side even a lot of people think it's brown but slightly the green side so it's a wonderful complement here to work on this side of this one here so I'm just want to work this through like this and I'm gonna uh, take the, the color out here like this with some of my paper towel just a bit I'm gonna I like to use paper towels and all different kinds of stuff to create all kinds of movements and stuff into my into my backgrounds. I don't always like backgrounds to be um, you know just one one color one way. Step back here just a bit and so I like them to move. So I'm going to uh, put this in a little heavier. Let some of this disappear out through here. I like a little bit of streaks, but not so much that it's going to fight or get in the way of my peonies. So I'm always watching that. And the peonies have uh, a lot of petals on it, so we can get a lot of contrast with it. And and uh, so, but I don't want to have so many streaks into my background that it will distract from the peonies themselves. So we want a little bit of this color go through here like this. I'll just lift the pressure on the brush. That's what this fusion brush just does so nice. So I can get a, a bit of movement here without too much, you know, to, without too much so it doesn't overpower it a bit. I'll take just a touch off here, just a bit like that. So I get some of that movement that I want to have right in here with that. Now, I'm going to paint it. I'm going to work a peony into here. Now, this paint is still a little, I mean, it doesn't uh, dry super, super fast, but so I can back it off this way. You can also use a little water or something like that to cut through, but I'm going to uh, do uh, put in the shape of my peony that I'm going to paint right in here right now, backing it out this way, and we'll drop one down here, pointing down this way here right in there like that. So one will hit more of the burnt um or burnt uh, um, the burnt or the raw umber side and burnt sienna side here. And I can uh, increase some of this right up into here onto the shadow side. Just lightly take that off. Sometimes I use my brush, sometimes I use my finger here to shape up the flower just a bit. I want to leave 
some of this shadowing on the shadow side of the, or the lower side here, which will be the shadow side of the flower. So it's going to assist my shadowing of the flower right away. So those two will sit right back there. Maybe we'll make a little one that'll pop right back up this way here like that. You can see just a little one right there. Now, so it, it's glazing. Now I could come back in and do more stuff in there, but I kind of like that one right now the way that is. So let's come in a little closer here now and we'll work on, uh, I, of course, uh, painting the peonies. And when I paint peonies, like I say, I use all different kinds of techniques and, and to them. I'm going to start this one by by looking to my warm colors and then into my cool colors. That's really important because the once you cool a warm color, it's very difficult to get that warm color going back without it getting completely opaque. And if you're painting for a type of a layering or a undertone and colors, sometimes that's difficult to do. But it's very easy to cool a warm color. So artists have known for years that it's far easier to cool a warm color than it is to warm a cool color. And so we start warm. So I'm going to come out and uh, one of the colors that I really uh, have enjoyed painting with is the uh, Dari Light Yellow. And I have uh, this one. I have it as a glazing type color. It's a bright, bright underglow yellow, yellow orange. It is uh, a lot brighter than what we have in some of our... Um, other colors. Dari Light Yellow, Indian Yellow, real close. Indian Yellow is a little more transparent than the Dari Light Yellow. And I'm going to push this warm, very glowy color. It, it has a glow to it, an intensity of glow. Uh, and But it's also got a translucency to it. See, so I can push that right through here. See, it, you know, cheaper Cheaper acrylics will, won't will have these types of high-grade colors in there because they're made for doing these types of techniques. Look at the brightness of that. And I can just take this out here, and it'll go right into some of these darker shadow tones right in there. That'll be great. I'm going to make this really kind of glowy right in here into the center here where I really want to work that color. Let's push a little bit back out here to this one but not as much color and you can see it immediately takes over I mean it's it's fun because you can get this right out into some of these edges and really create some nice edges now let's go into some of our naphtha red light this is again a warm tone a warm tone color I'm going to take my uh, palette knife here and push some of this right out of the way over here for right now so that uh, we have, we can stay under camera with some of this. Let's push this right up here as well. Alrighty, so let's come back here. Let's take some of that nice warm color, maybe a bit of that Dari light into that. Now this has extender. These, these colors that are in here, I have extender mixed up. They're called global, which means they have a longer drying time. I mix extender up in them. There's a special way of making them, and those you'll find in other videos and stuff. And I'm going to come right in here into the center here and just kind of push this color around in and out. This is the movement of the of the peony with some of that other color here. Okay, and I'll push a little bit back here. I want this one to be a touch cooler, so I'm not going to push as much as much color or pigment into it as as I do into this one. This is going to be my center of interest one. And I want it to you know, really pop in there. And I might want to push in a little more of my Darulide into that. Get that kind of orangey color going in there. That's pretty nice. Maybe a touch of it right out through here. I'll take my nap or excuse me, my red violet. This is my cool, my cool deep color. Now I don't want to go completely cool yet, so I'm gonna have about one to one with my Napsol Red Light. So Red Violet, Napsol Red Light, that gives me a color that's a little bit darker. It gives me a color that's a little bit cooler, not completely cool yet. And I'm gonna push and move that color around here. I'm also gonna say, okay, this is gonna be the shadow side of my peony coming right down here. We're gonna do a white and yellow peony, but it's gonna have these red kind of colors. So I'm gonna push this around and I'll push this color to the low side. This is the shadow side of my flowers here. Push this back up in here like that, okay? And we'll push a little bit 
here into the center of this one and around and we'll let this one just stay very casual here very dark and very casual as and very lost same back here very lost all right so we'll uh, have a couple of others what i call spot colors i'm going to take some of this these two reds together here and just spot some heavy color here not as much on this one maybe a little bit here now this what this does is these will be just like you'll be seeing some yellow and then boom here comes some other color just like you'll see in some types of peonies like the ones i have out in my front yard they they do that quite a bit now uh this is a little bit of a uh, large brush to be painting some of the uh some of the stuff on the uh, peony this was my number eight so i'm going to go back down here to a six um a four would be good as well to my fusion filbert these are the key to painting these are these brushes because they're super soft they're super super soft brushes and i'm going to put a little darulide yellow in there let's put a little hansa yellow out here it's a bright hansa yellow is a brighter color yet and it's a little bit uh heavy and more opaque I'm also going to grab a little bit of white here and i'm going to do a white to a to a, a yellow kind of peony now the other thing that i want to do is have some of my green and my red out here i'm going to have green leaves and red now this is this makes a a beautiful gray color so it's sometimes into the peony here i'm going to want to use some some gray some softer grays not quite as yellow here and in fact we might add a bit of that that'll keeps it a little bit soft so let's come right back into here just kind of use the corner and push this around now you gotta imagine a peony the smaller little petals are up here into the center here and we'll kind of pull them around and they kind of cup into like a a little bowl here so you kind of touch and pull down and around you can wipe your brush many times i'll wipe my brush maybe pick up a little yellow here into some of this and lift off it and leave just a light little tip and take off some of the extra there so when i paint peonies i do a lot of lifting off of color sometimes you might want to lift off with a little shadow color to bring that shadow back out but we'll start in the center here like this and what i usually do is start into the center like this and of course not <laughs> i have so many different techniques this is just one way um, and then I'll come back out over out to here too and I'll draw the longer uh, petals to the outside here pulling in and out I want to get that some of that movement here but we'll, we'll grab a few of the petals of the peony here of the of the outside petals push them in and out like that here to get some of their shape sometimes more yellow it's pretty here in like that and down so I I'm varying the color here just varying what it is that I'm drawing and then you just got to get the a good wiggle going here pushing sometimes pushing pushing in and out these are the growing the long reaching petals of the peony so you want to uh, you know you want to vary them and and stuff as they go around here now as we come around here to the outside out to some of these we're going to just suggest the petals here because we want some of this to get lost and disappear so we just let it roll out there real quick like that and let it just disappear so now we have the outside and we have the inside of where the peony is there and i'm going to go state some uh some petals here on some of these others so i get their movement going as well and i like to paint kind of quick here and set up some some petals here just come down curve curve here you're setting up the I, i'm painting for motion of the flower more than anything else and uh, you know i'm not painting for uh, you know each individual petal as much as i am just the the motion of the flower here now i'll just tap in a little bit here like you know your eye will say okay well there's the centers you know let the viewers eye see the suggestion of it and, and you know many many painters many artists that are starting out painting these paint them too stiff they paint they uh, uh and i did for the longest time 
and I, you know, and and I still do sometimes because I get worried about shapes and stuff, and then they start getting too stiff. And what you want to do is just reaching petals come out, have a little edge, and then push it with your finger. Just give a little bit of a motion. And that's what I paint for, is movement more than anything else. And you've heard me say that with roses and so many other types of flowers. And uh, those of you that paint landscapes with me and other things, I use, uh, you know, I paint for movement of things, not not individual shapes as much as just movement and let what happens happen. And you get beautiful flowers that way. You'll get beautiful ocean waves that way. And so let's come back in here with some of the gray and some of the light. Uh, let's come back in and, and hit and so these are going to kind of curve up here still maybe curving a little bit here and if I get it too heavy there I can lift off with my finger right to that edge and create that little edge there of that um, I can also take my brush and back paint it out as we get out here though we want to open up some of that movement we want to you know turn the flowers out so the flowers the, the petals themselves are changing the direction from out all the way up to here so somewhere into here you might have other little uh, curved ones or it's changing the direction a little bit or you see just the edge of something there and um, that's what you're going to try to emulate here into the peony and we'll do some yellow ones here some yellow pushing up some yellow and and I like lots of little movement but it's all going to kind of follow the shape of opening like this and then closing up like that and that's what we got to do and you just got to get you got to remember the smallest ones are on the inside here and uh, then they get uh, bigger and bigger as they go out and sometimes take out color pick up a little bit of your red even that burnt sienna and even the Burnt sienna on a little green, a kind of grayish color here. Take some of that out with that as well. You know, you get um, all different kinds of colors here. And uh, paint these out here. Boom, get some different movements. Now you can, we can also say, okay, we're gonna have a light side up here to our peony, so you know, we might build a little more yellow, a little more light here. Let's get a little more white right up here. Put some heavier white right in my brush here. And build these lights up some more short, choppy little touches of color here. There, that builds. And that'll help you build a more uh, light side to it. Sometimes you can just put on like a little edge there or push in that's pretty I'm looking see more than anything else when you're painting the peony here you're getting you're building and building and getting that motion that's what I'm really looking for is that that motion here and I want to head up towards my whites here so I'm building these up here so there and see as I get that then I can wipe my brush and I can lift off to help get some of that uh, shape and stuff there. So you can, uh, you know, come back and restate some lights here. It's like that. You know, sometimes a boom, a little light petal comes out there like that and lift off. Little touches of light here. Out like that all different kinds of ways this is just one of the ways I do that I really enjoy when I paint peonies but it's, you got to imagine the smaller ones in the inside here and then we've got to move out now we don't want to just we want some of this motion here as I'm moving out and that might be a bit light there so I just put in a little dark let's get some gray into my brush and I'll lift off some of that extra that I don't need there like that and that still gives a nice motion there a couple of extra petals there just like that maybe a, a little bit of a, a light little touch or an edge there a little petal comes that way it's what I'm looking for it's just movement so these petals are starting to fold over you know I might have a brighter little yellow one right in here maybe this 
is coming more to a yellow side here. Some of that's coming around and just kind of move the brush around here a bit and just paint for the opening and the movement. Not too much little touches there because we got so much going on on the other side of the peony there. And that's what we want. Biggest thing is you keeping your eye on the warm side and the cool side here. Build this up again. Grab some of that gray and lift off a bit. Lift off. Build some of my lights. Here. Nice petals. Here. Lift off kind of like a bowl shape there just a bit. Building that. And build this up a bit more here. I can go back with some of my reds and darks and paint in and reshape. Uh, I'm going to take some of my red, violet, and red here. Let's go back and touch just a bit of it here and there through this kind of increases, gets those little spots of color that you'll see inside of a peony sometimes, maybe under the bottom bowl here. You see a bit of that light and dark coming together there. Like that. That's kind of pretty. Get some maybe just little hits of that light color out here. Push that in and out. You just, you know, just paint for the movement. See, just push that color in and out and just let the movement take over here. Real soft. Little gray color here. Hitting that edge there. There we go. Maybe soften this edge here. So you have edge, you know, that's definitely light. Uh, heading over here towards its light. You know, this is definitely the light edge of your of the peony here where the light is so the top is light up here this is definitely the light and um, then you definitely have the shadow to the other side there as you're building and building and building that and um, I'm going to lift off just a bit here pull back and lift off just a bit so I get some of that movement in and out here like that that's pretty and I'm building see and so what it is is just several times building and building here and uh, so I get the kind of shape that I want I kind of like that one right there like that let's go over here now to the other one we want to gray it down let's get a little bit of that green and red together that nice gray Listen, and we'll gray down our yellows and stuff here as well so Everything will do will go very quickly onto this one here and very suggestively because we got the main peony there working really well for us and I don't want to distract from it too much. So we'll uh, you know you're gonna balance your, your painting here, but we don't need that much onto this one. We'll need a few of the edges here to the outside petals pulling in and out like that. We need the colors a little softer, a little cooler. It's heading down the shadow, so we'll make sure we have that red-violet into this color, this gray color here. We'll make sure that's in there. And we don't need that much coloring in here. We can have a little bit of that yellow stuff here, but it's got to be softer. So you can have just a bit of that movement here. But again, that move, see, and, and I'm painting for the movement, painting for interest and movement around there. But we're watching the value of it here. It's nowhere near as light as what I had here in the front. If I make the other one lighter, then I can get away with more stuff onto this one. But this one's got to be softer. And especially as we go over here, you might really get down into these grays and just do a, a few soft little touches here coming out like this. You know, just a, a few little motion, movements of it. Push in and out. 
and this is really where the heritage paint shines because it's so heavy pigmented you can do these quick little things like this and they look great but if you're trying to do this with cheaper acrylics it don't work <laughs> it just doesn't work and I'll put a little more light so I'm going to build it but not quite as much here that'll be okay and let's take a bit of our reds here and we'll just paint through a few little touches here soften those out let those little reds of that come in there and um so uh, there's all different kinds of peonies the ones i have you know they have a little bit more shape to the outside petals they're not super wispy they get these be beautiful big outside petals that are kind of fun and then uh, they um, get uh, the centers just are amazing just hundreds of petals just going in all different kinds of directions and stuff and they're they're wonderful um, and that's kind of what I'm going to be doing here but I'm going to show you here how we back paint in some of this I want to put in a few lighter brighter yellow let's get some of that dotty light there some of that yellow just boom let's put some of that in I just like some of those extra little touches of color here there like that that's kind of pretty and uh so before I go do some of that other uh, negative type painting around let's take some of our pine green and um, maybe a little bit of our burnt sand in there pine green some yellow oxide is a good color to add to that and let's come in and just take a, a first very casual look here at our stems our stem lines here as these would come through like that they're going to need to be a little darker so i'm going to add a little bit of blue a little red violet to that and some burnt sienna and then in back into my pine green again so i get this darker darker color and but it's you know kind of modeled and it varies and now they show up pretty well and we'll get a few other little darks we'll use that for some very casual little dark dark leaf suggestions back here as well coming down movement that's what I like to have it's just some movement there skip it around a bit let's take that let's get that pine green back up in here with some of those colors maybe a little bit of yellow here so it's not I don't want to be too too bright yet here but so we'll use some of that blue and burnt sienna to tone it down just a bit now this is what we call negative painting where I come back in and I will actually shape let's get this a little cooler I'm going to add just a little more red violet to this I actually will shape the outside edge of the peony here with the uh, leaf or the shadow color that's what we call negative painting and and um, porcelain painters do it a lot this is one reason why you know as an artist you know over the the years of my painting I've painted so many different styles because each style has its own way of doing something and sometimes you take so you learn something from one style and then you turn around and can use it in other you know other styles of painting so here I'll, I'll take some of that and I'll vary the color a little bit a little yellow into it and uh, I'm going to shape up the outside edge of my of some of my stuff going on here and um, sometimes I might just use that uh, burnt umber and, and excuse me the burnt sienna and the raw umber here too with some of those greens those are beautiful colors here put a little bit of green right into that burnt umber I keep saying burnt umber burnt sienna and raw umber here and push that around and those are real pretty uh, little colors here let's squirt out a little bit more of that raw umber love that color and uh, I'll use that right down here with some of my uh, greens and stuff so and 
you know, it's they're beautiful colors to uh, to do this negative painting and and especially like right around in through here where I'm I really let's put a little blue and a little bit of red violet with that too. What that'll do is darken it and cool it without having to go to black. I don't like to use black. I used to always use black. Now I don't. So we'll darken this and cool this back a bit there like that. And that's kind of pretty here. And uh, let's use some of this back in here. Just a lovely contrast color. Let's drop right in here and see I can increase the contrast between these two peonies here by dropping some of that color in there. I can also take some of that burnt sienna and soften anything out there that I want just and, and but increase the uh, you know the the color itself into that area. Oh, I like that. Now what I'm going to do is use some of this right now just to lighten up and add some movement. Now we're going to add some lighter greens but I'll use this color here right now just to add some of these green movements and stuff out here like that. Nice. And this is when you're painting like this this is where it's really important that you do use a high quality acrylic here because you need the color clarity because we're we're multiple mixing colors here of different kinds. And if you don't have a good quality acrylic, all you're going to get is mud instead of these real clear colors. And I have so many people that write and comment, and I like your comments. There's so many people that write and comment and say, oh, I tried it with this and it doesn't work. And yeah, it doesn't. I developed, you know, one, one thing about this that's been painting. I've been painting a long time and I've developed... You know, started out as a chemist developing color, uh, you know, colors, and um, I've worked for a lot of different paint companies developing a lot of things. And there's, there's, there are this stuff out there that just won't work. So, you know, they're all made for different types of conditions. There, you know, every paint has its place in our market, but uh, you know, they, you basically with the paint, you're going to get, you know, you, there is no such thing as a as a low priced high quality color it just isn't going to be there to be able to work with it so so here i've set up this movement for the back now what i'll do is i'll come back up here let's take some yellows and some of that green here i love that let's add some burnt sienna to that as well let's get up to our lighter green here even some red a little bit of that red in there That'll tone that down even a bit there. And look at that beautiful kind of yellowish color, like yellowy green that I get here. I'm going to use that for peony leaves have a lot of little tiny strokes coming in and out of them. And so I'll just, I'm just going to emulate them. I'm not going to paint them perfect here. Just going to, I and I'll do that many times in these types of paintings where I won't, um, paint the exact shape of a leaf because I want that to stay for the flowers more than anything else and and uh, so I'll just lightly come out here and just pull out and shake the the shape the leaves a little bit the longer uh, mini strokes and stuff like that but I won't uh, come in and uh, make these uh, perfect peony leaves I'll just, I'll just stroke and shape here a little bit in and out of that center like that and I want to keep that lost edge to that and we'll vary that up a little bit more red some of the light grays and stuff into that's kind of pretty let's get a few little colors little movements here just little color strikes here I like to do that just drop that around here, there, like that. See, it's just very, very casual here. Let's uh, maybe a little bit of Hansa and a little more white into that, lighten that up a bit. Let's add a few little light touches, little light hits here, high contrast light hits there. 
Just a few of those. There, like that. And uh, just movement. That, that's all I'm painting for, is just some movement here. Just touches and movements. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to paint the, the leaves as much as uh, I just want that color out there. Just to help, because this light color helps your eye travel through the lights here, like that. And that's what I'm looking for here. Is just some of this movement of light traveling, and just use your finger to take some of that off. It's real soft and pretty that way. Little tiny hits, little sparks. I call these little sparks of color, just kind of little touches of them. Just take your brush and kind of, and this is what these little fusions are perfect for because they, they hit that surface so light here. And uh, you can do just little light, quick light touches with them. They're, they don't dig like a synthetic one does. And, and you know, so many acrylic painters paint with the synthetics. This is a synthetic but fusion, but it's a synthetic squirrel, which is designed very, very soft. Which, of course, the squirrel brush was the main painting brush by many for the um, high quality techniques. You had Kalinskis and squirrels, and the squirrels worked really, really well, especially into watercolor. And uh, we use it in the course, you know, I, I, I love to use it into here because the synthetic holds more. And it's designed to paint more like a watercolor. But uh, see, that works pretty well. I like the way that that came out. We'll take a little more of our umber and the greens. And I'm just going to pull right down here. And really, let's take a little more umber, burnt, uh, blue, shh, raw umber. <laughs> Some reason I can't tell you that today. A little blue and a little red violet here. Nice, deep, dark, cool color here. Let's get that way down in here to my nice cools down into this area here. Let all of that just kind of fall down to that real deep shadow. So you have that coming right down there like that. And then we'll push some green with a little bit of yellow. Not like that. that hit that white. We don't want that. But I just want to break it up just a bit. Warm it and break it up just a bit here. Just like that. So here you have a, a, a real fun way to uh, to uh, paint some peonies. Get some of that movement down through here. That's kind of pretty. Might even take a um, little soft yellowy orange kind of color. And not that white there, Dave. For some reason I keep hitting that little puddle of white that's right there. Oh boy. And we'll take a little red in that. And we'll push a little bit of that right back in here. Push it back. Here, and you're going to give just the impression that there's going to be another one falling away down over there. And uh, I'm going to take it over to this side here just a bit as well. Here. There we go. And then what really makes that more than anything else. Boy, when you take that dark red violet and you start pushing on that center and those side petals there, we'll push some of that back and that'll just let this one sit back there. Like maybe there's something back here. Another one right back up over there. And we'll push a little green or so right in front of it. And then we'll get out of there because it's not supposed to be that much there's something right back well let's maybe push let's push another one right back up over here there's just a little movement of it right in there maybe it's right back there that's kind of pretty take a little bit of the red here a little burnt sienna in red or the uh, naphtha red light in red just to I like to do these just very impressionistically there's something back there see just an impression of it. I don't want to get carried away with too much shape or anything like that. 
just the impression of it right back there like that and uh, that's pretty good let's just set this move this over here like this and we'll come in just a bit and give you a nice look and now uh, let's see let me just onto this edge here we'll take a little light color here let's bring this edge let's bring this edge of this one up I think that'll give you a better travel so I, by by taking the edge of the fusion here like this and drawing more of the edge of the petal here like this I give more of an edge detail and that brings the viewer eye viewers eye a little closer right into here and a little more detail into it and it sets this right up up on top of that right there so you get a good flow through we can bring this edge here of this kind of petal right here like that and uh, bring these pretty close to each other here so those come closer sometimes I do this at the end I'll decide sometimes that's nice casual little painting I just let it all go but that works pretty well through the edges there I like that okay so that's where I start with I start with some of those glazing and you know you can there's other peony techniques that I use that are beautiful that I do even more glazing with and everything and um, you'll look look for those I have some pictures even up onto our Facebook page make sure you're following us on Facebook page on our Facebook you can find us on Jansen Art Studio or David W Jansen um, on uh, Facebook and we have Jansen Art Gallery we have a few other things on there but you can always watch we have all kinds of stuff posting on there uh, paintings that you don't see here on YouTube because we're, we're we post quite a bit on there but anyway thanks very much for joining me hope you enjoy uh, some of the other ones go take a look at some of the others hit that subscribe button because you help us out a lot when you do subscribe because we get more subscribers YouTube gives us more distribution and we uh, would like that and I'd like to show you a Quite a few more little techniques, okay? See you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.